sports are really important vehicles for relationships. We have purpose. We have a why. We bring people together. We connect. I feel like God is our greatest supporter and our greatest coach. Welcome to Rabbi on the Sidelines. This is Rabbi Ara Sherman of Sinai Temple in Los Angeles. And this year, this week, we are not joined by one or two, but three very special guests. Three guests, actually, that have made history in the state of California and in high school basketball. We are joined by Coach Ryan Coleman, Ariel Grossman, and Yali Schwartz, all stars of the Shalhevet Firehawks basketball team, who just won the CIF, and you'll correct me with all of the... Uh, uh, divisions and everything, but the CIF championship, the first girls or first Jewish basketball team to win a state championship in California. It's great to see everybody. How you doing? Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a group here that did not end their season with the loss. Every single team, NBA, college, WNBA, high school, we always end with the loss, but you didn't because you won a state championship. So let's start right there. What's it like to end your season with a win and to go out literally with a win? Um, in the moment, Staff, I mean, in the moment it felt surreal. It still feels amazing. And I'm really grateful that we got to end with a win and not a loss. Ariel? Everyone always remembers like your past season on the way it ended. So it's definitely a great thought when I think about like how my high school 11th grade career ended, ended off on a win. Coach? Totally surreal, still uh, pinching myself, still send these girls texts uh, all the time. Can't believe that we did it. Um, and it's, it's the pinnacle of high school sports, winning a state championship, so couldn't be more proud. So this was not the first time that you got to that level, though. It wasn't like out of nowhere. Right now I'm reading Seth Davis's book about the March to Madness, about Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and uh, Indiana State came out of nowhere to go 33-0. and but This was not out of nowhere. I read an article, I believe it was in the Shall Have It newspaper, about this junior class and how proud that your coach was of you because you put in this dedication. So this doesn't happen out of nowhere. Coach, what did you see behind the scenes that realized that you were ready to go? Well, as you mentioned, this, this didn't come out of nowhere. The previous year, we, we did make it to the state championship, uh, and we unfortunately lost that game. Partly, uh, Yali over here had an injury during the first quarter of that game, and she's a large part of what we do. Um, so, so getting to that point and losing uh, was difficult for us, but the dedication that our entire team and program showed in order to rebound and get back to that same place the next year and get over the hump was phenomenal. So after that loss last year, you knew where you could be and you knew where you needed to get to. What did last summer look like for you as leaders of this team and not just for you individually, but actually getting this team to work together as a unit? Um, well, losing was definitely a huge motivator to wanting to get back and actually succeeding, um, which we accomplished. And in the summer, I think once we actually got back together as a team and we set our goals in the beginning of the season, um, that was like eye-opening and everyone realized that we were able to accomplish it again. Ariel? Um, yeah, I would say the same. It's our preseason um, workouts and our preseason training is really, really important um, in terms of like how we play. And Ryan always says this, and every year we start off in the locker room with the boys and the girls team setting our goals for ourselves in the preseason to determine how we want our season to go. And thank God we've accomplished majority of those goals. Um, so I think, yeah, as you always said, like being together with our whole team and being together um, right when school starts at the end of the summer is really important to our succession. So Yala, you mentioned uh, something that you did over the Chagim, over the fall holidays, which you went to Israel. Yeah. But you didn't take a break from the basketball court. You trained with the best, a friend of our show here, Tamir Goodman. How did you connect with Tamir, and what did that training look like, or something that you learned from Tamir that you brought back to Shalhevet this season? Well, I went to Israel during the Chagim for five weeks, so I felt like I couldn't take that big of a break before the actual season, because that wouldn't result good, I think. But um, I trained with Tamir. I trained in, I forgot where in Israel, but I played on a team and I practiced with them. So that definitely kept, kept me in shape and exposed me to playing with different players. 
so it helped. So you were not just honored uh, at the game, but they did a beautiful uh, story for you on KKL9 with Jim Hill. And this is what they asked you about when you knew it was the right moment that you were going to win this championship. So watch this clip. At what point did you feel like we have what it takes this year to win the state title? Last year, like losing to San Domenico definitely like motivated us to get back to where we are today. Like having that feeling of like we wanted revenge and like we wanted to get back. People thought we were like out of our minds for saying that we would go back to Sacramento two years in a row, but we did it. You guys already have the state title banner up. You're getting rings as did a ceremony at the school. You're being honored by the city council. They're the first Jewish school in California history to win a CIF championship in any sport, boys or girls. UCLA women's basketball uh, team is honoring you guys. What is all that like? Feels great. Yeah, it feels amazing. Insane. Um, experiences of a lifetime. We're gonna remember this forever. Like realist. And so it's not just a basketball team, but it's a Jewish basketball team. Ariel, what did that mean to you when you stand in front of LA City Council, where so many things happen at LA City Council? They have the opportunity to change things in the city as a Jewish athlete standing there. What did that mean to you? It shows that we're so much more than just a small Jewish modern Orthodox private school in the LA community. We represent so much more than just Shalhavet, and we also represent the entire Jewish community. But it's, I think it's bigger than that, and this, um, state championship win just showed everyone how um, like I think we all felt really recognized and it showed everyone how much of an impact we can make and how special we are. So standing at City Council coach uh, what did that mean to you personally on your own journey and what did it mean for you coaching this Jewish school honestly in a year that was filled with anti-semitism specifically in the sports world as well? I think standing there at, at City Council may have meant a little bit more to me um, because, like you mentioned, I, maybe it's a generational thing, but I understand how much goes on at City Council. Well, well maybe some of the kids um, aren't there yet in terms of realizing uh, the nature and, and the beast that we've created. I, I could not have been more proud. Um, and like you said, in a year where there's been a, a lot of anti-Semitism, um, and I think that our, our student athletes even have been exposed to it at times. I think that this meant a little something more. And I think that um, these girls in particular have articulated that, that they stand for more than just basketball. And so outside of city council, what's been your favorite moment? Was it the Sparks? Was it UCLA? What was that moment that you were like, oh my gosh, because I can put a ball in a hoop, I can actually connect with people that I've never connected before? Well, just to touch on that, we weren't actually honored by UCLA because the NCAA reared their ugly head and said that because it was an NCAA tournament game, UCLA was not actually able to honor us. Um, and we're, we're being honored by the Sparks, but not we, it hasn't been, been. Nice. So we're going to look at some of the on-the-court aspects and uh, go to some game film. So first we have Ariel, a little uh, clip that I found on YouTube of a uh, highlight reel, and we'll uh, play that clip. So Ariel, you can see that you can drive the court. In just a moment, we'll see that you can shoot the three. And in just another moment, you can see you have the, that you're able to get to the open spots. And one more three. What is your specialty? Is it three-point shooting? Is it, <laughs> what is your role on this team that makes you who you are? Can I interject and say that you found the one time that she drove <laughs> to the basket this year and put it in there? I think that was amazing. <laughs> Go for it, Ariel. What's your response to coach? Um, my strength is definitely three-point shooting. I would not say that I'm so good at getting to the basket. Well, we're getting there. It's an improvement, but my strength is definitely three-point shooting. And so if it's three-point shooting and the opposite coach knows that it's three-point shooting, how do you get to an open spot that allows you to actually have that shot open? It's definitely challenging when someone doesn't leave you the entire game, but at that point, it's um, a lot of it is up to my teammates. Thank God I have really selfless teammates, and our point guard last year would always look for me. Oh, would always look for me, and she would really make sure that the second I was open, I would get the ball. And whether that be I shoot it right away or people run at me and I pass it right back, 
I think a lot of it, like when I'm being guarded like that, a lot of it is up to my teammates. And so you use the word selfless as your teammates. Coach, what does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis of people being selfless and not worried about who passes the ball, who shoots the ball, as long as you get the win? Yeah, I think that's a large part of, of our team. You know, we have um, two players here that received a ton of awards, and deservedly so, for, for their roles that they played on this team. And um, they get a lot of credit. But as anybody knows in team sports, it takes everybody from, from the coaches to the trainers to um, every single player and, and our administration to make everything happen the way it does. So selfless looks like um, players who do the little things that don't always end up in the box scores. And like Ariel's talking about, it may be somebody who sets her a screen. It may be somebody who's throwing her a great pass. Um, and those things, again, they're, they're not always recognized by everybody in terms of, of awards, but there's no way that we would have had the success without having everybody on our team uh, buy into this concept. I would say that's also a Jewish life lesson, the fact that you are involved in a school that has a dual curriculum. It doesn't just spend your days studying math, science, and English, but just like here at Sinai Akiba Academy, that you're spending half the day in Torah learning, in morals, in lessons, in values, in another language. Do you think that translates to what you have to do on the court as well? Um, yeah, for sure. In terms of selflessness, like we just mentioned, in terms of sportsmanship, um, how we treat the people we're playing against, mm -hmm. you know, we don't trash talk. We don't, um, I don't know, do stuff that you might see at, in typical NBA games or stuff like that. But we treat other teams with sportsmanship. So I think that definitely translates. And what has been the... Uh, reaction when a small Jewish school goes into a larger school. Any type of learning that says, you know what, I never met a Jew before. I never played against this team. Any type of interaction with other schools that either you have learned or that they have learned about us. I think that when we go into other larger schools um, as a small Jewish school, our actions are really under a microscope. Mm. So anything good that we do or anything not as good that we do or is definitely just going to be blown out of proportion even if it's a good thing mm -hmm. um so i think even the smallest things just as the other team falls and you pick them up really makes us makes an impact in the way people view jewish people and jewish schools and yeah and so let's go to yali's uh film clip here uh definitely some more drives to the basket so uh, yali we'll see what you did here Most of those clips are actually driving to the basket. So when you drive to the basket, how does that open the floor? What are you looking at when you uh, are taking that ball to the hoop? Um, well, usually, basically every time I have the ball, I drive to the basket. But I don't know. I have certain moves that I do when I get to the basket, Euro steps, stuff like that. Um, recently, I've been looking to shoot more, though. Yeah. Coach, uh, some comments on this very selfless and... Uh, Soft-spoken uh, all-star here. Yeah, Yali's a uh, bull in a china shop. Um, you're either going to get out of her way or you're going to get run over by the train that's coming through. Uh, and although she mentioned that she has a Euro step, um, she, she doesn't fear contact. Um, and her unique skill set and her, her athletic ability is um, phenomenal. Um, but the selflessness a lot of times because the other teams key on her in finding the open teammate is great. And as she mentioned, this offseason, one of the things that she's really working on in order to expand her game is to be able to create more space for her in order to shoot more from the outside. I don't like to compare her to NBA players, but um, I was telling her this morning that I think that she's, she's very similar to a Jimmy Butler. Um, in that she would rather drive to the basket and create contact. And her killer instinct and her will to win is really second to none. And so let's go to the Jewish side for a moment. And is there a Jewish role model that you have in your own lives, either historical or even in your life today, that has taught you lessons that you can also bring to the basketball court as a team leader? Um, I have one. His name is Joe Alexander. He's um, a Holocaust survivor. 
I've known him for my entire life. He's my neighbor, or he was my neighbor. Um, he survived 12 concentration camps. He's a huge hero. Um, he still educates people on the Holocaust. He still speaks about it in front of many, many people. He just returned from Germany like last week. He's still traveling. He's 100 years old. He just had his 100th birthday. Um, he's definitely taught me to never give up. That was like his main thing of how he survived the Holocaust. Every day he would look um, as if it was a new day and he'd tell himself never to give up. So that's definitely something I can bring into basketball. And does he know about your journey and what's he think about uh, this special moment? He for sure knows about it. Um, I think he even watched our game. <laughs> he's, he's impressed. <laughs> and Ariel? Um, I wouldn't say I have one in particular, but maybe BD Deutsch. She's a marathon runner in Israel and she's a religious woman and she has like a lot of struggles in her life. She has a lot of kids. One, I believe, um, has, has um, like a little bit like of, I forgot the disease that it's called, but, and she's a religious woman and she faces struggles. Like religiously, she wears a skirt when she runs. She like leaves her family to, um, go travel and to train and she's like chasing the Olympic dream. So I think it, she's played a lot where she's been injured and she's gotten COVID. She really also started after her life, um, like began, like she had her five kids and then she started to pursue this dream. So I think it shows that, like it shows me the importance of balancing your passion with your family and with your friends. And it also shows never to give up even through all, um, whether like it's wearing a skirt when you play or whether it's um, your family or your health that you should never give up. Like failing is okay, but don't stop once you fail once. Sounds like Giannis to me in terms of the famous uh, failure speech that he gave. And uh, that's your hero and your role model. But now both of you and your team have actually become role models for these younger students, these third, fourth graders that are saying, you know what, I can go to Shalhevet, a Jewish school and have the highest level of Jewish education and the highest level of basketball. So what would be your advice to now a third and fourth grader who just watched you both uh, perform at the highest level, saying that you can do this too? Um, keep pursuing what you want. Don't think that just because you're younger um, that you can't do it. Keep working hard at your dreams and goals because you definitely can achieve it with hard work and believing in yourself. And so, Coach, I want to go to you in terms of a, a, a little clip uh, that talks about your journey, because your faith journey is not necessarily similar to the average Shal Hevet student. So uh, this is what you said, I believe, on the Yeshiva World podcast um, when you talked about what basketball means to you and your faith. So about uh, 10 years ago or so, um, when the real estate market flopped here in Southern California, as it does about every 10 or 15 years, right. Uh, I decided that um, kicking the pavement wasn't for me anymore. Um, I, I've, I grew up in a family where basketball was everything. It was our, uh, our religion, so to speak. You grew up in a family where basketball was religion. Just off the air, you said you were, I believe, uh, teammates with uh, Baron Davis in the AAU club. And so a native Los Angelino who loves basketball, how was basketball religion? How do you see maybe some parallels between the sport and then what we're doing right here and sitting in the sanctuary. Um, my mother worked for um, Pony in the late 70s and early 80s and um, signed many of the Lakers in that time period to shoe contracts and um, you know, later became great friends with Joanne Buss, who was Jerry Buss's wife at the time. And I grew up a very privileged Lakers fan, got to travel uh, on the road. I have pictures of, of sitting on the floats um, with the championship trophies at, at all the parades. You're gonna be on the one this year too, right? I would love to do that. Yeah, just <laughs> a little bit of work to do on the defensive end and then we're there. Um, so basketball to me really was, was the way that I bonded with my family, both my parents, um, and I'm an only child. So, um, you know, basketball was, was everything to us. It's, it's how I became um, who I am today. And the parallels between life and basketball, and I speak about this with uh, our team all the time, are great. You know, in, in life, um, and, and when you get to work later in life, you don't necessarily get to choose who you work with. Um, just like in basketball, you don't necessarily get to choose your teammates. 
but you're going to make a choice at one point or another. You're either going to get along with your bosses. You know, I don't like to think of myself as their boss, more of, of an equal and give everybody input. Um, but you don't get to, to necessarily choose all those things. Um, and the parallels go on and on. Uh, I think that by, by what we achieved, I think that we, um, you know, in the end, just couldn't be more proud. And so, Shalhevet doesn't seem like the school that you would end up with coaching. What was the journey to Shalhevet, and when did you realize that you can take this school that, you know, people thought, okay, they play basketball on the side to the level of CIF champion? It was a little bit of a mistake that I ended up at Shalhevet, at least in terms of coaching basketball. Um, I had a friend who was the basketball coach and asked me to help out. I did, um, and I ended up actually starting as the baseball coach at Shall Have It, and when he left to pursue a, a different opportunity, they um, gave me the opportunity to coach the basketball team. And I think that the first thing and the most important thing that we've done at Shall Have It is really instill this culture of you can um, and empowering the students, the student athletes, into believing that they can do bigger and better. Uh, and it's really easy to be a coach in this community because of the background. Um, that these kids have. And so I often ask the ca athletes, coaches, owners that I speak to on this show about prayer in sports. Wondering in your situation, is there a team prayer that you do? Do you bring a certain tefillah from the Sidor or something from the Parsha of the week? Is that a sign? What does that look like in this aspect of Shalhev? <laughs> um, we don't pray as a team, but individual members of our team will definitely like pray and dive into uh, Hashem on a regular basis or especially on game days <laughs> when we need that extra help. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say the same, but we do in the locker room before every game, we have like our song that we do, which is like our prayer kind of. So it's not like we're saying like a tefillah, but it's like kind of like the way we unite with each other and like our prayer in our own way. Yeah. Can you tell us what song that is? <laughs> it's called Reload. It's more of like a motivational song. It's like a hype song. Yeah, yes. to get us all united and, and like we should turn up. the lights off and we have one flashlight in the middle of our circle and like no one could come in. And, and we start like jumping uh, up and down. Yom Kippur, myself and the Chazan will also uh, try Reload, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so you've done it. What's next? Your juniors looking to your senior year. Are you looking to carry this past your high school career? Are you looking to go into coaching? What's next? Um, that's in the thought process still. Definitely thinking about my options. Uh, either playing in college, playing in Israel. Nice. I don't know. I'm figuring it out. Um, yeah, so as juniors, we're in the college process right now. So we're, um, I think, could speak for me and Yali, just keeping our options open at the moment. And what have you seen in Coach Coleman um, in terms of what he's brought to you? You've probably played for other coaches, whether it's on club teams or elementary school teams. What has the coach brought to you? Because he's not on the court. He can only go so far as tell you what to do. Um, what does coach bring to this team that allowed you to also get to this moment? Um, it's far past like a coach on the court. It's like really a mentor to all of us and teaches us life lessons that will really last a lifetime. It's bigger than the lessons that he teaches us on the court, whether it's practice, a timeout, even if he's like screaming at us during a timeout. <laughs> um, they're like lessons that you learn, f like that are you're gonna take further than your basketball career. Your lessons that are gonna take you in life, as he said, like you don't always choose the people you work with. And sometimes in life, even like you don't, I'm very stubborn when he tries to teach me new things. Um, so even when he like tries to like stop to get me to be stubborn, like that's a lesson in life, like never give up. Like you can always continue to pursue what you want. You can always get better at something. You can always learn new things. Um, also, I think um, he really promotes unity amongst our team. So especially in the Jewish community, that's a huge um, aspect of our community. So the fact that Team bonding is so important on our team that he talks about all the time. Without us being bonded, we would not have the success that we did really translate to off the court. And thankfully on the team, our team is very close and all of us are like best friends on the team. So that really is important and that's all from him.
Allie? Um, I definitely agree. Most of what she said I was going to say, he's more of a mentor than a coach. He's not just a basketball coach. He teaches us life lessons that we'll take with us forever, and we'll, we can apply it to anything we decide to do in life. So actually, that's the last clip that we're going to show, because you took the words out of Coach's mouth about the lessons that he's trying to teach you um, while on the sidelines and you on the court. I think it's been a process um, since I got there. Uh, although the previous coach had a similar mindset in um, competing against everybody. Everybody and anybody is kind of our, our rule of thumb. Any night, we'll go play anybody on any court. Um, and the way that, that I see it is that we're just preparing ourselves so that when we get to uh, our governing body for high school sports, is called CIF. And when we get to the CIF playoffs and we have to go play in a gym where there's 12 or 1,500 people packed in because we're playing against a school that has an enrollment of 3,000, despite us only having, you know, a couple hundred kids right. in our school, that we've played against teams like that. And we've played against better teams um, in the preseason and, and in tournaments that we play in. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really just, it's educating the kids on what real life is like. So they didn't watch that clip before, but they said exactly what you said a couple of years ago. So it seems like you're teaching them well. What lessons are you trying to teach these uh, kids on the court? Believe in yourself. Believe in your teammates. Believe in the, in the process and your preparation. Um, you know, we, we prepare, uh, and these two girls in particular, they prepare as much uh, and more than anybody that they're going to play against. Um, and so they have to continue to believe in, in what they've worked on. Um, you know, the sky's the limit for them on and off the court, and I think that that's an important message to, to keep preaching, both as a parent and a teacher and a coach. I think that, um, you know, being a parent, teacher, and a coach has so many parallels, so I try to bring all those aspects to the court for them. So it seems like this story is not an anomaly that all of a sudden Jim Hill tells this on Channel 9, but as you tell the story, it has come from years of work. How do you sustain that level and get that next group to say, they did it, we can do this too? I think that, um, fortunately, if we're talking about the, the near future, um, we return the core of our team. We're, we're, we're graduating two seniors who we're going to miss very much. Um, but we bring back a lot of girls who have now played in the state championship two consecutive years. They've played on the biggest stages possible in high school sports here in California. So I think that they're going to believe in themselves, but kind of changing the um, how we are going to be approached as – now we're kind of the hunted instead of doing the hunting. So having that target on your back, you have to bring your best every night. Um, and I think that's a message that we're gonna, um, that we're gonna have to visit and revisit many times. And then as far as the, the distant future, or not so distant future, but these girls that uh, are coming into ninth grade now, or like you said, they're in elementary school and seeing what these girls do, I think that a lot of those girls are gonna be able to look at the work ethic and the time um, that's put in, and like Yali mentioned earlier, not just not just that, but their demeanor on the court and their sportsmanship, um, and those younger generations, they have the perfect role models here. So hopefully, it's a little bit of, uh, more of a seamless transition for them. So I was told that that game in Sacramento was on a Friday, and that you got right back on the plane for Shabbat to come back here, and therefore a lot of the fans weren't traveling with you, but they were. Um, they were watching, I guess, from home before Shabbat as they were, as they were cooking. Um, what was that experience like, sort of balancing, like, okay, we got to win this game in order to basically get back to the Shabbos table? Um, how, how did that feel, and was that a tension, or was that something that you decided to embrace? I think, in a sense, it was a motivation. None of us wanted to go back on that plane to make Shabbos to be devastated like we were last year. Last year, we all got back the whole weekend. Like, none of us even wanted to talk to each other. It was like a letdown for everyone. So I think going home for the weekend, like everyone had an amazing weekend and like going into Shabbos on like being so like excited and like your, the energy is still in you, definitely was, it felt great. Even the second we ended, like the plane ride was, everything was amazing. Everyone was telling us like, be quiet on the plane, like be quiet on the plane. And we're like, no, no. <laughs> Um, yeah. Wait, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> that could have been a tension between Shabbat and basketball because you had to basically win that game and get right home. 
but you decide to embrace this idea that you can actually do both. Often people say it's religion or sports. In my motto, it's actually religion and sports. So how are you able to embrace both of these ideas that you can do both at a very high level? Mm. Just to add on to what Ariel said, we didn't want to come home for Shabbat and have the same Shabbat that we had last year, basically. Um, also, in terms of fans, all of our fans, we barely had any fans because it was Shabbat. So compared to the other team, which brought like eight buses, and I think that was more than any other team ever brought like in this year. Um, so that was definitely also like a motivator. Yeah, but adding on to that, even though our fans weren't physically in the building, our school is our like our biggest fans. Like there will not be a game where we will not have at least 20 people there, whether it's our family or our students. Our, the Shahava community are our number one supporters. Even when we were playing, they had a whole watch party for us in the gym. And going on social media to see that watch party after we won just felt like a, like a sense of community. Like we're really one family. And they're our biggest supporters. And they will always motivate us. And knowing that they're by us, our rabbis, our teachers, our principals, our coaches, our friends, like even students who we're not necessarily so close with are always like, good luck tonight, like you're gonna do amazing, or like posting on our like, um, like it's called Schoology, like how we, where all our school stuff is, like just like posting like everyone come to the game. It's really just, I think basketball creates a sense of community at our school and that has really been proven this past season. Actually interesting, a lot of coaches and broadcasters that I speak about call the locker room the sanctuary, basically the Bay Knesset. And even though they're not of, let's say, religious observance, they understand that it's a sacred moment in, the, in that space as well. And so to conclude, what's the lesson that you've learned from Shalhevet and the Jewish community along this journey? I think that the, the biggest lesson is that um, anything that you dream of, um, if you prepare yourself and surround yourself with other people who have common goals um, and, and similar beliefs, you can achieve it. I think that when we sit in the locker room at the beginning of the year, um, like Ariel mentioned before, and we set our goals, sometimes they're goals that aren't necessarily achievable. Uh, in my mind as an adult sometimes, I don't think they're achievable. But it's great to have some young, almost naive um, outlooks on things. And, you know, as much as, as I've helped the community and, and these girls in our basketball program, I think that they've helped me um, realize all, all my dreams and goals can also be achievable. I think what he really was saying was that Herzl tells us, Im tirtsu ain't so agada. If you will it, it is not a dream. And that is exactly what we have heard today from Coach Ryan Coleman, from Yali Schwartz, and Ariel Grossman, all stars of Shalhevet Firehawks basketball team. If you have not heard their story, make sure you find out. And next season, make sure we're all in the stands as we cheer them on for another CIF State Championships in California. True heroes of Shalhevet, of the Los Angeles community, and really of the Jewish world. We thank you for being here on Rabbi on the Sidelines, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.